Hello, I'm Tim Peacock, a volunteer at Pendon Museum. I'm in the small village of Charney Bassett, standing outside the Chequers Inn to introduce this episode of Views of the Vale. Charney Bassett is about four miles north of Wantage, and in 2011 there were about 300 people living here. It's interesting that a village as small as this for many years had two public houses right next to each other. We will hear more about this later in the episode. This episode of Views of the Vale takes us on a circular tour around Wantage, visiting seven villages or small settlements in all. This small bridge crosses the brook in West Hendred, about three miles east of Wantage. From here, West Hendred Brook flows onto Steventon and then into the Thames. The model of the bridge is one of those easily overlooked details at Pendon, as it is located in the centre of the Vale scene. The setting of the Pendon model is based on an idyllic moment captured by H.O. Vaughan in a photograph taken in 1938. Probably built in the mid-19th century, the bridge is constructed of roughly dressed stone, regularly coursed to form the main face of the bridge, with irregular blocks forming a coping. It may have replaced an earlier ford. Childry is a springline settlement dating from before the Norman Conquest. It was once a prosperous village with three manor houses. The principal manor house, Rampaines, had connections with the English Civil War, during which Charles I is said to have spent a night here. The development of Childry was influenced by new canal and railway networks. Between 1805 and 1807, the Wiltson Barks Canal was completed between Longcott and Challow, passing through the parish just north of the village. There was a substantial wharf on the canal at this point, about 300 feet long, but its purpose is unknown. The Great Western Railway, opened in 1840, passes through Childry Parish about two miles north of the village, near the former Challow Railway Station, seen here in 1933 during track alterations. From Challow Station, Childry Watercress was sent to London, Birmingham, Cardiff and Newcastle, and this business was later expanded to include Letcombe Bassett, a village covered in another episode of this series. Charles Cottages, now a single private residence, were originally a terrace of three buildings that at Pendon are called Ivy Cottage, Charles Cottage and the Smithy. Both Ivy Cottage and Charles Cottage have chalkstone walls, the former with a tiled roof and the latter with a thatched roof. In the case of Charles Cottage there is some evidence from the interior that at one time it may have been two separate dwellings, one of which was a hall house. Tradition has it that Charles Cottage is so named because Charles II, when a prince, had his horse reshod at the adjacent smithy while he was staying at Childry Manor during a journey to Marlborough. In the Pendon period, Childry Smithy was owned by the Packer family, which had smithies in various locations in the area. In a book by June Maxwell Drummond called Childry, A Village in the Vale of White Horse, the author recounts that five generations of the Packer family ran the smithy. On the rear door of the former smithy are several horseshoes. Some have the U-shape upright to stop good luck running out, whilst others are inverted. The horseshoes are included on the door of the model, another example of Pendon's attention to detail. The leather bottle was a public house in the 1930s, but is now a residential building. Originally it was a pair of 17th century cottages on the Farringdon to Wallingford Turnpike. Around 1833, the cottages were converted into a public house and traded successfully, serving the local farming and railway communities and benefiting from passing trade on the turnpike. Following the closure of Challow Railway Station in 1964, custom diminished and in the 1970s the public house was converted into a restaurant. More recently, the building was developed into cottages and an adjacent property was built providing self-contained holiday apartments. Goosey, which means Goose Island, is a small settlement with a population of about 130 people. It has a large open common with a number of what were farms around it, as well as a church and a schoolhouse. A public house called the Pound Inn is now a private residence. Pound Farm is at the eastern edge of the village green, although today it's no longer a working farm. 
Roy England was attracted to the farmhouse by its appearance and its architectural history, which covers a period of over 500 years. The original part of the house was built in the 15th century, and today the front door opens into what would have been the central hall, open to the roof. It was originally thatched, but this has been replaced by Welsh slate. In the late 16th century, a timber-framed cross wing was added on the west side, later infilled with brickwork. There were leaded windows in this wing until April 1945, when they were blown out as a result of a Lancaster bomber crashing and exploding nearby. A spacious three-storey stone-built section was added on the southwest corner in the late 17th century, replacing part of the cross wing. The walls are of roughly coursed local limestone with ashlar corners. Although of steep pitch, the roof has almost certainly always been tiled. In 1801, an eastern wing was added, constructed from local brick. It was originally a coach house, but is now a kitchen. At Pendon, the model has been set in the highest part of the village, and the farm therefore requires a deep well as an essential modelling detail. This has been indicated with a model of a wind pump from Home Farm in Hinton Parva, at the western end of the Vale. Lyford is a hamlet of around 50 people about a mile from Charney Bassett. The almshouses were built by a local charity in the 18th century around three sides of a cobbled and paved courtyard. The building originally provided 20 one-up, one-down cottages and a small chapel, which the residents were expected to attend twice a day. The almshouses were still in their original state in the 1920s and are modelled as such at Pendon. More recently they have been converted into eight ground floor apartments with the upper floor used for storage. They continue to provide accommodation for people from the parishes of East Hannay, West Hannay and Lyford. To fit the Pendon model into its allocated space near the church, two cottages on either side were excluded to reduce the length of the wings. This hasn't resulted in the loss of any architectural features. For many years the village of Charney Bassett was served by two adjacent inns, the Chequers and the Horn, opposite the village green. The Chequers is still a thriving inn, but the Horn eventually became a private house. To the other side of the Chequers inn was a blacksmith and wheelwright business. All three buildings are preserved in model form at Pendon as they appeared in the 1920s. At the time of making this episode, in July 2021, None of these buildings nor the life at arms houses were in place in the model scene. This plan shows their intended locations close to St Mary's Church, the model of which is currently under construction. The Old Smithy is today a private house next to the Chequers Inn, but in the 1920s it was a working blacksmith's. The Pendon model is known as Kerridge's Smithy, based on the original signboard showing William Carriages, Wheelwrights and General Smith. The Carriages ran the business in the 1910s, but by the 1920s it was run by ex-army blacksmith Charlie Browning. About six million horses had been used by the army in the First World War, and there must have been many blacksmiths looking for employment in the 1920s. An illustration of the importance of horses in the rural economy is that at one time there were three smithies in this small village, carriages, one owned by the Pusey estate, and one at Charlie Browning's home, Brook Cottage. William Carriage's business was also a wheelwright's. This was an important craft, building and repairing wooden wheels for carts, wagons, traps and coaches, and for the belt drives for steam-powered machinery. They also made the wheels, and often the frames, for domestic spinning wheels. Now a private residence, Hillside was the former Horn Inn. The building dates from the mid to late 18th century and is constructed of coarse limestone rubble with a late 19th century tiled roof. Some of the elevations are lime washed. The stables are now a single storey wing on the right hand side of the front building. There was a cobbler's shop along the lane side which was demolished to allow access from the lane to the rear of the property. It is thought that the name and sign are derived from the legend of the Pusey Horn. 
Legend has it that the Saxon inhabitants of Uffington Castle travelled six miles to raid Cherbury Camp, where King Canute and his invading army were encamped. However, a young shepherd boy spotted them and blew his horn as a warning to the Danes. The shepherd boy was rewarded for his vigilance with a commission in the king's army and all the land within the sound of his horn around Pusey. Around 1945, Moreland Brewery, which also owned the Checkers Inn, decided that it was not feasible to run two pubs in the village, so the horn was sold and ceased trading as a public house. There has been an inn here since at least 1806. The present double-fronted Checkers Inn is on the site of a previous building and was probably constructed between 1850 and 1877. It's built from hard limestone from one of the nearby quarries on the Corallian Ridge, which runs between Stamford-in-the-Vale and Farringdon. The roof is of Welsh slate. To the rear is a wing of the earlier building. This is lower, probably the same height as the original main building, and constructed of rubble stonework. The pub has passed through several hands. Wantage Brewery became the owner in the late 1800s, Moreland Brewery of Abingdon acquired it in 1920, and it later became a free house until, in 2005, it was purchased by Breakspear, a brewery company in Henley-on-Thames. Pendon's model of the inn is ready for installation and will be sited close to Kerridge's smithy. Other buildings that will be modelled around them are to be found in Ashbury, Knighton and Bishopstone, and these are covered in other episodes of this series. Here we are at the end of another episode of Views of the Vale. We've taken a circular tour around Wantage and looked at buildings and other structures in the area that we have modelled or are in the process of modelling at Pendon. I hope you have found it both enjoyable and informative. This is one of a number of episodes in this series, so do please take a look at the other episodes. We hope you have enjoyed this short video. We have a lot more from Pendon to share with you and do subscribe to our YouTube channel, which we update regularly.